this is Madeline Sklar. And Suze Cooper, and you're listening to All Things Audio. Right, let's jump into our first bit of news for today. It is a piece of Spaces news from our friend Legion. He's been keeping a really good thread on the Spaces desktop updates, Madeline. What, what's the latest thing he's got to tell us? Yeah, this is really cool. Um, he, Legion's been staying on top of you know anything related to Spaces for Desktop, and recently we reported that we can request the mic, even though it doesn't work great, but we, we can do it from desktop. And then more recently, he shared that we can do the emoji reactions. But brand new, as of last week, we're now able to utilize the chat feature from desktop, and that is huge. And as soon as I saw this post last week, I immediately, because I'm almost always on desktop, I'm more of a desktop user, I immediately jumped on to a space, just a random space, so I could see it in action, and it is awesome that they finally added it to desktop. So when you're tuning into a space, you're on your desktop computer, you know, on a browser, you will now see the little chat. And when you click on it, all it does is open up that that chat post so that you can contribute to the conversation. So Suze, I think this is huge news. I haven't really heard much talk about it. It seems like they just quietly added the feature. Yeah, and this seems to be really the way of the Spaces updates now, right? Like we don't really hear anymore that there's been an update. It's more like, us lot within the community that are using spaces regularly are figuring it out or spotting something and then you see posts from other people with them using it or screenshots or whatever there, there's not really a kind of direct announcement from say the spaces account anymore right over here so yeah um really really interesting though uh, you know to see them add the chat onto the desktop version i mean totally a chat box is so much easier to type into using a keyboard right than it is on mobile anyway so it kind of feels like that feature was always intended um for a more ease of use if you like on a desktop of some sort so it's it's kind of interesting to see that they've integrated that on there also as i say every single time just the fact that they're updating stuff they seem to be maintaining things they're obviously thinking about where spaces is heading and how people might want to use it uh is a good thing because it means that potentially i mean i'm not saying it means absolutely because who knows what's going on in elon's head most of the time but i think it's more likely that he wouldn't can a feature that they're actively doing some stuff on did, I don't know. Do I really mean that? <laughs> I, don't know if I really believe that. We want them to keep spaces going. You know, in the beginning, right, when he took over in the beginning and there were all those changes going on and, and you know, getting rid of all that staff, you and I were quite concerned that we wouldn't be able to broadcast this in spaces. And, and we here we had been doing it for several years, week after week. And, you know, a couple of times we were like, hmm, should we set up Clubhouse just in case? And there was concern and we didn't know if Elon was going to keep that feature going because at that time he was deleting some of the features of the Twitter now X platform. Yeah, I don't know if it was safer when actually he wasn't interested in it or no one was interested in it and it was just sort of left there to, to sit there quietly or whether it's actually more at risk if people are playing around with it. And, you know, we've seen him pull the rug from from other things uh, in double quick time so who knows who knows but I, I sort of feel like they're engineering on it they're developing it they're thinking about it it's obviously somewhere on the roadmap for them and uh, I you know I find that kind of interesting in terms of where X is is heading and, and what it thinks it's going to do with all these different media channels when it becomes the king of all apps yeah it definitely gives us more um, hope that that this is going to continue on and just get better. Like there's definitely more confidence in, in spaces when we see information like this of them making these updates. And then an interesting post from Elon himself, he shared saying video and audio calls are coming to X. It'll work on iOS, Android, Mac, and PC. No phone number needed. And basically referring to X as the effective global address book. Do you think it's trying to compete with WhatsApp? That's what it kind of sounds like, huh? Yeah, that's certainly how it sounds from, from this piece, um, you know, Mashable, when you sort of read through what it is that they're going to be doing. We've been talking about whether or not they were going to add 
phone calls and and different elements to the DMs and and that in, into the app for quite some time. So you know, if anything, this is just yet another. This is coming because I feel like we we've, we've said before this is coming because they've already sort of mooted that this was a direction they wanted to head in. Um, it's interesting. Do people think of what is no matter how Elon's trying to frame it right now what is essentially a social media platform do we think of that as somewhere to go to make our phone calls i I don't know um it's a different it's a different behavior isn't it and i don't know that i would i mean i don't even directly kind of think about using the voice notes in the dms even though i love doing it and when i do do when i do use them i think oh yeah this is great this is a great idea but it's not something i do naturally um however i would pick up whatsapp and just think oh yeah i'll just voice message that person there's kind of a different mentality when you hit the the icon for whatever app it is that you're choosing in that your intention behind hitting that icon um you know it is is kind of set isn't it so i just wonder if people will think about doing that on x or are we supposed to spend so much of our life over here that we don't think of going outside of this x universe to communicate with anybody any other way maybe that's musk's intention i think it's going to take time to get used to some of these features that we normally go to other platforms for we know that his intention all along is to turn this into the everything app he wants this to be the one place you go so you don't have to go elsewhere He's competing with YouTube right now. If you're a premium subscriber, it used to be called Twitter Blue, now it's called Premium. If you're a premium subscriber, you can now upload a video that's up to three hours long. Now, that sounds a lot like what, you know, YouTube, long form video. I mean, who does a three hour video over there? But, you know, you now have that ability to do it here on the X platform. And then we see a post like this talking about video and audio calls are coming It's like, it seems like he's taking every popular app that's out there and and taking elements from it so that you stay here on X, you don't go anywhere else, you have no need to go anywhere else. But it's going to take getting used to. He's really embraced this long form video. Most of us do not come here to go watch videos, but they're pushing it more and more. They're putting it into the algorithm. They make it very easy to do picture in picture. They just added that very recently. So if you do come across a, a video in a post, you can do picture in picture so you can keep scrolling and, and doing other things while you're on here. It makes me think of YouTube. So I, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting, Suits. We're just going to have to get conditioned to these features. Are we going to come to X to make video and audio calls? And I'm like you, I'm still getting used to the, the voice DMs. I love the feature but I don't always think to do it. Again, I just think it's all very well trying to add these features in. And, you know, as you just said, it it sort of adding the the long form video just turns it into YouTube. Well, we've already got YouTube and people are very conditioned to go into YouTube to find their content and to sit and watch a long form video. Now, whether this is called Twitter or whether it's called something else, at the end of the day, this isn't a platform that you would necessarily align with going directly to to sit and watch a video so you know and and all the while that he loads on all of these different features that I very much feel like he thinks people want and doesn't necessarily know people want over here um there's sort of a risk of just getting lost in the melee and it just not having any sort of focus to it at all and people being so confused by what it is and what you're supposed to do on it um that he just loses people. I mean, he's lost enough people as it is already. Um, It's just a very odd way, I think, of trying to build up the app, you know, just by throwing everything at the wall and and kind of seeing what happens. Very strange. Yeah, I agree. And it'll be interesting to see if he tries to compete with our big news of the day. We're going to be talking about Clubhouse. It'll be really interesting. Like, we'll, we'll have to start paying attention, like, the new things that are coming to Clubhouse, is he going to try to imitate that as well? Um, so drum roll. I wish you, you were in your studio and you could do a drum roll for us because hard to believe an hour before we go live here, huge, huge news from Clubhouse. So Suze, I know you didn't really have time to go through all this because you've been on the road, you're traveling. Um, I had a chance to to read through some of this stuff. Uh, Morgan's here. Hopefully Morgan 
can uh, come up and share his thoughts. But wow, Clubhouse making some big changes. We kind of knew something was going to happen, right, Susan? They were going to have this this uh, big town hall, and then it got pushed back. And I was really starting to wonder what what's going on over there. Yeah, I mean, we spoke last week about you know there was the town hall and it was the biggest news was that there wasn't really any news but they were obviously preparing us all for something it felt like laying the foundations and getting people ready for a massive massive change it felt like you know regular users of the app were being told you're not going to really recognize what we're doing and we're changing our direction and then this news um today as you say the blog came out i think not not too long ago i haven't had a chance as you've said unfortunately to to kind of really dive into it but i'm gonna invite Morgan up in in a moment I think and see if he can talk to us about it a bit more it certainly seems as though Clubhouse has basically gone very much back to its roots when it started it was unapologetically voice and audio led Um, they introduced various different things Uh, you know you could pin links you could uh, have text chat uh related to your room and all of those kind of things basically anything that isn't voice or audio has now been removed from the app and we were told last we were talking last week about the fact that they were going to remove some features that people might find um it surprising that they were going to remove it would appear that that's what they've done so um they have announced that the update that they brought out today is going to be centered around this new format called chats which is a voice only group chat with your favorite people um and it's asynchronous so you drop by and basically leave your message and then someone else comes back so it's it's a lot like i guess the the voice notes in the in the dms but yeah i really would love morgan to come up and and tell us more because i'm sure he's had um I think we've had about an hour, I think, to have a look at and digest what's what's coming out of the, the Clubhouse blog. Um, but yeah, interesting to see them going back to audio and voice. Yeah, we haven't had much time to review this because, I mean, like this just happened today. Uh, but yeah, I put a variety of posts into the nest. We'll also have it in the show notes for the podcast version. Um, they put out a blog post calling this the new clubhouse, talk more often with your favorite people. So I'll just kind of run through some of this in the blog post. Uh, But in the first post in the nest, talking about clubhouse from Paul Davidson, the the co-founder, he he does have it linked to this. You can also just go to blog.clubhouse.com. But this is really interesting. It starts off saying, hey, all we're evolving clubhouse to be more like a messaging app with a big new update today available now on iOS and Android. So Android got it first about an hour ago. I'm on iOS. I literally got the update on iOS like five minutes before we started here. Uh, it's like all of a sudden, cause I kept going over there and the update in the app was not recent. Um, and it was still showing the old icon. Then all of a sudden the new icon, uh, then it said update. So I have it downloaded. But I, I just went in it briefly. It's going to walk you through stuff. So I'm just going to wait and do it later because, I mean, how am I supposed to do that five minutes before we start this space? But, Suze, this sounds really interesting. When you read through this blog post, um, they're, they're wanting to make, like, some changes and make this more about friends, not followers, which I really like. Um, just trying to change it still keeping some of the elements, but really thinking more about a way to connect with people. It can't always be live. I'm finding this quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, it does say here that live isn't going away. It says you can still have live rooms. They'll continue to be a central part of Clubhouse, just like they've always been. That is literally the two lines that it mentions about live, which is quite interesting. Very much heavily in this blog, it is talking about these chats, which is essentially, um, you know, pinging voice messages to and fro uh, with people. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting seeing them go right back to voice and audio only and I wonder if this is kind of symptomatic of what happened to the landscape so we're all plunged into this during COVID when we're all in lockdown we all know how it started you know we couldn't reach out to each other so we came together virtually we could talk to each other in these live rooms and I just think the point at which our lives then 
opened up again, people did move away from social audio and didn't spend so much time in the kind of virtual social audio spaces. Um, I feel like a lot, we've seen an awful lot of those independent apps drift away and die off. Um, if anything, Clubhouse could have disappeared completely because almost the need for it and its main use case in that moment in time disappeared and went away. And a lot of people left there. They tried to pile in a whole load of different features to draw people back in. And that drove an awful lot of people away as well. So I kind of, I'm kind of, um, in awe of this do or die attitude where they're returning back to audio and voice in a different way, where they're trying to tackle it from a different angle. Um, and perhaps it, it really is kind of a, you know, it's it's this or nothing. Like if this doesn't work, this is what we want the app to be about. We want it to be about audio. We want it to be about connecting with other people through voice and um, through conversations. And if this doesn't work, then then that's it. I don't know. It feels like a real kind of a bit of bravado in we're putting our stake in the ground and this is how it is. And I admire that. I really do. I'm actually excited about these changes. I got on Clubhouse pretty early on when it, early days of the invite only. I was so thrilled to be on there. But very quickly, I just felt like I was listening in on TED Talks. You could never get the mic and I, it just really turned me off from the start. And whenever I'd go back, I just didn't really feel like it had changed a whole lot and felt like people used it to be a wannabe of what they wanted to be and try to come off like they're these experts when they were not. Um, so I really gravitated to spaces. But in reading through this post today, the thing that sounds so interesting to me and this is definitely going to get me to at least spend a little bit of time on here something i have not done in a long time in clubhouse it says today's update is centered around a new format called chat a chat is a voice only group chat with your favorite people it's like a clubhouse room but it takes place asynchronous asynchronously um this is a hard word to say so you drop by and chime in on your own time so that's what's appealing to me when it's asynchronous like that. It's about when it's convenient for you and you can still be part of the conversation. I think one of the toughest things, we're all very busy, right? And if you miss something that's live, you don't get to be part of the conversation. The most you could do is listen to the replay if it was even recorded. What I like with the sound of this is you could take a, a small group of people and have conversations, but it can be live, but it also can just be you chime in when you're able to get to it. That's that sounds pretty interesting. I like that. I mean, does that so, sound like something that that you would utilize? I'm definitely going to play around with that. Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I've said before, you know, I've got groups of friends on WhatsApp where we only communicate using the voice notes. And this is very, very similar to that. And we've just said about using the voice notes on Twitter in a very similar way as well. So it's it's interesting to see Clubhouse kind of really, really leaning on that. But Morgan, you have got the mic. I really want to know what you think of this update. Is this what you were expecting? I know you've been following it for, for months and months. <laughs> what do we think of this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so there are a lot of details here. And I've had about an hour or so to read through everything. So this is, we'll, we'll do a better job of this next week. Um, I think top level, one of these to me is not hugely surprising. So one of the notes that, that, that the founder really stressed last week is this need to fit into people's post pandemic lives better. And I think we probably all know, like we're people who use social audio a lot, but most people, I think, during the pandemic, they were they were at home. Maybe they were stuck with their housemates or, or with their partner, and they had a lot of time, and they really wanted to talk to people. So when you have that situation, I think you really have great ingredients for social audio. You have a lot of people around, and they're, they're all willing to talk. And that has changed. So it's become more of a scheduled thing. We do this room once a week and we all make time for it. But it is something that we have to make time for. So I was really expecting something where 
you would be able to add to conversations and meet people, but not in a way that was like, oh, I've got to now decide to set aside another hour of my day here. And maybe I don't know how long it's going to go on for because it's an open-ended room. And am I going to get sucked into something and then my partner's going to get angry with me? Or would I rather go out for dinner with a friend? So social audio had to compete with all of that stuff. And introducing this asynchronous, non-live, like group social messaging, I think is probably quite a nice way of, of of helping with that a lot. Um, I mean, a way I've been thinking about it is, we think that one of the good things about social audio, and this was said earlier, is that you can multitask. I can be listening to a space and doing something in my day. I could be making lunch or going for a walk. But one of the things you can't do is multitask with people in your life. If I've got somebody next to me in real life, it's really rude to be on a space or listening to it and with that person. But maybe something I can do is fire off a 30 second message and reply to somebody, a voice message. Or maybe I can grab five minutes to catch up with a conversation with friends by listening to what they've said in the last few hours. So we can now multitask with people as well as doing things. And I think, I think that's, really, that's really important. Um, but a lot of this is, is new. So no, I didn't expect a lot of this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Suze, one of the things is we've often talked about people are adding video. Twitter's or X is making a push with live video. And we were thinking, oh, it's, it will come out out of video element. But what is really clear to me with this is they're doubling down on audio. Like everything is voice now. The back channel, the DMs, which used to be normal text DMs, all gone. That's all voice. In houses, what used to be the house chat where you could post pictures and post text to each other, it's now all voice. So this is really saying voice is crucial here. It's about talking with each other. So no video, no text. I don't know, does that surprise you? Well, I just find it really refreshing that there are developers and creators out there saying, right, we're going to do one thing and we're going to do it as the best that we possibly can. And this is the place to come if you want to do that one thing. You know, we've got YouTube trying to be a podcast platform. We've got even um, TikTok, I think I saw somewhere there's some audio elements they're trying to put in. We've got X that's trying to be just about everything. Isn't it just nice to think, oh, there's an app that's doing a thing. Like it's, it's not trying to do everything. It's not asking you for a photo and a link and a video and everything else. If you want to have meaningful audio conversations with people that are all over the world in different places and find out about some different stuff, this is the app that you go to do that on. And I just think that is a very different mentality to the one that we're finding across the social media landscape at the moment, where suddenly none of, you know, I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, none of these apps have got their own character anymore. They're losing their personalities because they're trying to appeal to so many different facets of what people are trying to do and trying to create on them. So I'm, I'm you know, whether it will work or not, I, you know, is, an, is another matter. Whether or not people over on Clubhouse are going to embrace the asynchronicity of it or the fact that they can't post links um, and pin things to to the rooms and and the chats. I don't know. But I just think good on them for sticking the necks out, right? And going, audio is our thing. We always said audio was our thing. We're trying to work it around the way that people are living now and, you know, post-pandemic, post the lockdowns and everything. And this is what we're offering you. And it is all audio and voice-based. And I just think that's, yeah, refreshing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. A, a lot of the details, again, we're still going through. So one of them is that you will be able to add a link to your voice message. So you can still say something and, and point people elsewhere. Another one, which is a footnote, but it strikes me that this is really interesting, is when you said anywhere in the world, one of the things that this does is it automatically transcribes all of the voice messages or whatever we're going to call them, the chats. And 
it will even translate them. So you can be in a social group voice chat with people who don't speak English, and you will be able to talk with them because everything is automatically translated between languages. Um, this is, I think, not yet audio, but you can see a way of doing automatic AI voice translation there. So you would actually hear it in English as well as read it in English. Um, but I think, you know, little details like that uh, are super interesting. Yeah, and, y you know, d doubling down on audio as a medium and on voice, as you say, there's there's an awful lot of variations of that and, and things that are being looked into, like AI voices, um, the whole uh, text-to-speech, all of those kind of things that could be incorporated in this if this is what they're really kind of doubling down on. And, and you know, where else could you go to do exactly what you've just described? Like, probably nowhere. So, again, you're, you're you know, they're thinking about, well, okay, how can we make this somewhere that people, they know where to come if, if this is what they want to do and if it's about conversation and it's about audio. Um, yeah, I mean, th they've said in this blog, we don't take these changes, changes lightly, but we feel conviction they will make Clubhouse stronger in the long run. We didn't build Clubhouse because it was a smart thing to do. Social products rarely work. We did it because we love this product and we believe in the mission of helping everyone have a life filled with great friendships. And that's the other thing, isn't it? This whole calling people friends and not followers, they, they never... Paul Davis, Paul and Rohan, they never kind of felt comfortable, I don't think, with being a social media platform, right, Morgan? They were always a little bit like, we don't really want to be one of those. Yeah, I, I think so. So this is, people will write this history and which parts of it are true or not, I still don't know. Um, but listening to early interviews with them, I think they really did start out by, look, we want to get groups of people who know each other who are already kind of friends or friends of friends just talking with each other. And when Clubhouse had that big viral spike and social audio was like the topic of the day, you had a lot of people joining the app and noticing that they had a, a follower count. And when you have this, you have then people opening rooms, trying to build followings. It looks much like the rest of social media. But it turns out that that's a really kind of corrosive thing for the friendship part. Um, those are not maybe the best conversations to have. I mean, some of the things I think, Madeline, that you experienced, people pretending to be experts and trying to do TED Talks, all of that comes out of having public rooms with follower counts. So this is like, it kind of, that happened. And I think Clubhouse sort of thought, do, should we lean into this? This seems like a creator thing. We'll do a creator program. Maybe this is maybe this is what's working about the app. But I think it became clear that that was like long term negative and wasn't sustainable either. So yeah, one of the really major changes of this is they've got rid of follow accounts. What you can do is you can see how many mutuals somebody has, how many friends, how many people who they've added have decided to add them back. And that that's the number. There's no, who are they following? Who's following them? Um, and it's all about that. So there's, there's another little detail when you're in a chat with somebody. And if you don't know that person, you can tap on them. And it doesn't say, oh, this person has 10,000 followers. It says, this person is friends with these two other people that you're friends with. Uh, and that's the thing that matters. So what this does to the social dynamics of the platform and the kinds of conversations that happen now, I think is going to be really interesting. And hopefully we'll get more of these sort of small, intimate conversations with, with trusted people and much less of these kinds of TED Talks that we have seen in the past. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But, you know, one of the things I really liked in this post that they shared today is one of the bullet points saying friends over followers. And so that is attractive to me. And then, you know, focusing more on connecting with people you like, friends of friends as well, not such a TED Talk environment. I know not everybody felt that way, but that was my the experience many times on the platform and it just became a big turnoff. 
you and I are fans of audio. We're fans of repurposing content. And I love how Zealous takes those two things and puts it together so that if you're using Spaces or Clubhouse or anywhere where you have recorded audio and even a podcast, anything that's recorded audio, you can easily take that content and repurpose it, make audiograms, make caption videos, just the tip of the iceberg of all the things you can do. Susan and I have been experimenting with it for, for some time now, and we both have fallen in love with it and invited Zealous to be our first official sponsor. Very exciting. And uh, I created a few more little audiograms today and I will be doing so in future as well. Their transcription is really getting better every time I use it too, which is, is a really great heads up for anyone that's looking for a good transcription service. Yeah, it's super easy to use. And just real quick, the website, go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com slash zealous and that'll get you uh, to the site. You can try it for free, see if you like it. If, if not, no worries, but you will probably fall in love with it the way Susan and I have. So check it out and let us know what you think. We're definitely eager to hear from our listeners because it's a really interesting topic. A lot of people left Clubhouse. Is this going to be enough to bring people back? Um, we definitely want to hear from you all. Greg is here with us. Hey, Greg. Hey, guys. Um, you literally just took the words out of my mouth. Um I'm just reading through the article here, so forgive me, and I, I missed the beginning of the combo. Um, so I'm kind of trying to wrap my head around all of it. The big thing, it seems, is these chats, right? Where, like, I guess it's like voice messaging, but just a little more fluid, and it has some transcriptions and language stuff. Um, to me, that, like, deepens the existing user base and, like, makes it a little more interactive, and you can try and play around with this and whatever. But does it really, like, A, bring people back or be like attract new people into the ecosystem. I'm not going back for that. Uh, I was a I was a clubhouse power user for over a year. This does not move the needle for me at all. Um, I think a lot of the things that it appears they're doing in this with, you know, I, I think it looks like the adding a friend request or like follower request or whatever it is connection. It seems like kind of a LinkedIn approach, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure um, where you can like one way follow, but then you can also add like a connect or maybe you can only do one of them. I'm not sure. Like things like that. Um, I'm scrolling through this, this article, like I said. Um, I, yeah, I think it's, it's cool. It's like a cool feature, but it seems like they're just like, again, just being like a proof of concept ground for other apps to just take these features and make them their own versus like, hey, this is like an app that I need to download because there's this whole new experience going on. And like, th there's like this, gravitational pull to like this new technology or new, like, I, I don't see it. I'm going to stick with what I've been saying, which is the best thing that you could build if you're an audio app is to come up with some sort of like randomized discovery where like you have like one-on-one -on -one or even maybe group stuff. I'm not sure, but it's like more of like round robin and like discovering people around topics and things and being able to talk to people that you, that you would have have to basically put no effort in to meet new people around the world. Um, that seems way cooler to me. And I would go back for that to like, hey, I can meet someone by just showing up. I don't have to like go and listen on a stage or whatever. I can just show up and like make one on one connections. That's cool to me. But to have like these voice group chats is like I already have to have a network there or people that I care about or like, people don't care. Like that's just it just seems like a group chat that's like has a little more fluidity to it. Um, so I don't know, I could be off, I might be missing something, but this doesn't seem like it's going to be pulling people back in or getting new users. I like the idea about having it be asynchronous. Um, I think that's one of the things that's appealing to me. Uh, that's um, early on in the article uh, where it says introducing chats. That I find interesting because so many times I am missing these discussions because I can't make it there live. But when they talk about how you can still be part of the conversation, but on your time schedule, that to me is appealing. And so I, I for me, it's, I, I'm definitely going to go check this out to see if it'll resonate with me. Um, but I don't know if this is going to be enough to bring the masses of people that left this year. I think time will tell. Question but about we, these voice chats. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you can 
opt into? Like, are they, they're public and then you can like add to them and watch them on your own? Or do you need to be invited as if it's like a group chat? Morgan, can you answer that? Yeah, we're still working out how this works. And it looks like um, the, are you friends or mutuals with this person is one of the ways. And are you uh, friends of friends? So let's say I start a, a chat with five people and then all of their friends of, all, <laughs> this is really hard to explain, all their friends might be able to see it and join in. Um, they're also based around houses. So it's not just a friend network here. You also have houses, which are groups of people who are into particular subjects too. So you could absolutely join a house and see chats uh, between people Maybe some of them you know, but many of them you don't know that are topic based. Okay, that's and that's going to be important. one of the ways to meet. I people. think I was misinterpreting. So I actually like that, that it's kind of like it's more public. Um, I was thinking for some reason that it's just like a feature rich group chat. But I, now I'm seeing it's like this Instagram story kind of feel too, where there's a yeah, the public. Yeah. To On the- it, so you can tap into asynchronous conversation. OK, I got it. I got it. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. Um, about. Yeah, on the group chat thing that I think we have to be careful with this metaphor because what this is is a kind of new third thing. It's it's a social group chat, which means it's a group chat that f- people that you're not friends with can join in if they're maybe friends with somebody else in the group chat. So there's this element of discovering new people, um, whereas a group chat is you can only be in a group chat if you're invited to it. And that's not how this they're works. Called, they're called chats, right? Is that what you're calling it? Yeah, they're called chats, yeah. So there might be some confusion there because people have an idea about what a group chat is. Um, but this this is more like- There might be a, a playoff, like a, like a synonym, like a syn- <coughs> excuse me, like a synonym for stories, like tales or some stupid thing like that. Like where you have, it's more of like a story and not in like the Instagram stories, but like, you are like telling us it's like an asynchronous like story that gets like added onto. So maybe there's a, like a synonym yeah. that that isn't chats because when I that that was my whole thing and I even read the article, albeit skimmed it a little bit. I was thinking it was like a group chat that just had like cool like features and pop ups and stuff. I didn't realize it was like a public Instagram story type thing. So Greg, why don't you check it out and and report back with us because. Um, I, I think definitely for next week, when we come back here to All Things Audio, uh, those of you that are finding this interesting, want to play around with it, you've got a week, come back next Wednesday and report to us what you like, what you don't like. Is it going to cause you to use the platform more or less? We got some other speakers I want to get to. I've been keeping track who got here and when. So Brent, you're next. We'll get to everybody. Just give us a chance. Hey, Brent. Hmm. I just want to say that week after week, I've been coming to this space since you and Sue started it because it's one of my favorite spaces because you have the you have to see the the insights of like social audio and what's going on because sometimes we can't keep up with all of this and as a disability advocate social audio was good for was good for me during covid because I could make connections and then when I then when I decide to travel the world, I can uh, use those connections as IRL friends. That is awesome. Well, th- first of all, thank you for being such a, a supporter of this uh, weekly space. We really appreciate that. And yeah, you know, these audio apps, I think, were really essential during the shutdowns and everybody stuck at home. I really love how we can all come together through our phones on our little X app and have these really awesome conversations and get to know each other better. And Brent, you you know, I've known you for a while now and it's just been a great way to get to know you. I probably wouldn't have otherwise. We pro- Our paths probably would not have crossed if it weren't for spaces. So uh, these types of social audio tools, I think are extremely valuable. Next up is Don. Hey, Don. Hey, Madeline. Um, yeah, you just actually keyed on one of my main points um, that I was going to bring up, um, I've always said social audio is a feature, not a standalone app. And, you know, you talk about we're on X already. So that's why we're in spaces. And 
and having this conversation, right? Um, Sue's brought up WhatsApp, having voice notes in WhatsApp because she's already in WhatsApp having conversations with people, whether it's text or voice or whatever. And I don't think anybody, like if I go to my mom or, or friends and say, hey, let's do some voice chats, but you got to get this app called Clubhouse and sign up for that. And then like the answer is just going to be no, right? They're just not going to do that uh, to have these conversations. And, you know, another big problem I have with this is is I, I did the update, I opened the app, and this is the second time in like the last 12 months that I opened Clubhouse and I have no idea what I'm looking at. And you can't keep taking your app and throwing it in the blender every six months and expecting people to keep coming back. Like we're social audio nerds. So we're going to go in there and we're going to hammer it. We're going to, we're going to bang it with the hammer. We're going to kick the tires and see what's going on. But you know, what happened to, we were all on threads, you know, a month and a half ago too. And, and, and it's a, you know, it's a ghost town. It seems like right now. Right. So I think this, it's reeks of desperation to me that they're trying to find something to grab onto, but I don't know how they ever monetize this. And at some point they're going to run out of money. And I just don't know how this works long-term because this is just one more thing that people have to go download, figure out how to use. And then in six months, if this isn't working the way they want it to, are they going to go and like I said, throw it in the blender again and see what comes out. So I think, I don't know. I just, this is a non-starter for me. I'm probably just going to delete the app and, and just move on from Clubhouse because it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Um, Cause I, you know, again, I'm having conversations on X and other places. I'm not having conversations on Clubhouse. That's a, a voice chat like that to me is not a conversation. Um, it's more of a, a comment thread. So that's, that's my two bits on that. Yeah. So. that that's great. Great insights. I love everything you said, Morgan, what's your thought on that? Yes. Yeah, so I was going to say, Probably, like, the way to think about this for me at the moment is this is a new app. Um, and it's learning from a lot of the things that it, it did before. But it's kind of like when you open this for the first time, don't expect to know how to use it. And I, I certainly don't. I'm trying to work it out. There are little bits I recognize. but And in a way, Clubhouse have taken one of the most challenging paths here, that they've basically launched a new app that builds on their old stuff, but with an existing user base. And you might think that a startup would want to start from scratch and launch a thing and get new users. So I think there's going to be a lot of people who have used Clubhouse for other things in the past. Maybe they are the TED Talk speakers or the people who come for the followings. And they'll open this and they, they won't know what's going on and they'll find that they can't do the things that they used to do. And it's just not for them. So one of the things that I welcome is that this is a company that's being more opinionated and saying, no, look, we do this one thing. If you want to come and you find value here, great. If you don't, maybe you're better off somewhere else. So some people will see. And the whole question is, do new people who've never used this before come and find that they are like meeting people and making friends and it's a valuable part of their lives? If they can do that, then good. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Um, but it looks like this is the, play, the bet that they're placing. Thanks for sharing that, Morgan. Uh, Greg, I see your hands raised, and then real quick, we'll get to uh, wrap this up with Paul. So go ahead, Greg. Yeah, um, I think something just popped in my head, um, kind of what Don and Morgan are talking about, is like with a new experience, um, I don't know. I, I feel like I have to use it, right, for sure, to make a, a real assumption, a real like, um, you know, give myself a real idea of how it works. But um, it feels like there's going to be a lot of tapping. Like it's not like I. I think people are looking for less. I could be wrong on this, um, but I think in like new social medias and stuff, I want to go in and have like experience, kind of just like put in front of me, versus or in like you know the rooms we have now, like you can just sit in a Twitter space or, or even a clubhouse room right, and get, it's like a good experience from having to do pretty much nothing. Whereas it seems like this will require as a non-creator, like creators don't like, you know, the game is that the more inputs, the more output, of course. But as a, just a, a, a consumer, which is going to be the majority of the people on any social application, um, there needs to be like a really passive experience for them. 
an option for that where you can just sit and scroll through your TikToks or you whatever. Um, this seems like a very active experience um, where you're going to be tapping yes. on every single person's face every time you want something. And that seems like another kind of barrier to like. Yes. So this is, I think, Craig, that's exactly right. And this is part of the bet that they're making. Uh, the founders stressed this last week that this isn't supposed to be a passive consuming experience. There's, the way they put it is, this app is not about listening, it's about talking. And they they think that it's only successful if they can get people that's talking a, that's to each a other. Bet. And that's, that's a huge bet, because then you, it's a huge bet, everyone exactly. to be a creator, but if you look at any social app, you're gonna have the overwhelming majority of people are not creators. Exactly. The other way to put it is this app is not about creators, but quite different to other social audio. Clubhouse are kind of saying, this is people, normal people talking to each other. This isn't about creators and audience. That's not what they're focusing on. That's not what they're trying to build things for. That's not the way to think about it. Now, that might not work. It might be that most of us do want to be either consumer or a creator, and that's the model. But Clubhouse are trying to do something different. It might not work, but that, that is kind of the, the way to think about what they're trying to do. I'd love to say one more thing, Matt, and then I'll get off my soapbox here. But I think people, I don't think people are looking for more ways to have group chats. I think ultimately what you have is an experience like a, a space or a clubhouse room is the top of the funnel where you can come in, you can just listen if you want, or you can participate if you want. This is a great, great format that Clubhouse invented. And then the goal is to make one-on-one -on -one connections. That is the lower part of the funnel. To have a different way to do this is not intriguing to me, um, especially when it takes a lot more effort for a lot higher percentage of the people. They're just gonna opt out really quick. It takes too much energy and too much cognitive load. So you already have the top of the funnel is you can meet people in the audience, you can meet people on stage, you can listen, you can participate, whatever you want. And then it's like, how do you let people, how do you give them more tools to interact one-on-one? -on -one? Because that's where the real value of these apps is, is to meet other people that you can build friendships, relationships, businesses, anything that you want in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, that's really ultimately the value. Um, unless, you know, there is community aspects too, of course, that you want to build community. Um, but I think the way that people, I know for me and in the spaces game uh, and growing on this app, it's really about how can you leverage these to network? And I would, I, I've been encouraging Clubhouse for a long time to build, like I said earlier, more one-on-one -on -one tools that allow you to meet people because that's really, like if you had, um, a, you know, a, a Clubhouse room and then you could, I don't know, there's a million ideas, but the idea is that the, the top of the funnel is already created, I think. This is already a format that's working, and then just adding like other ways to do group chats just seems redundant to me. Love all that. Thank you for sharing. We're going to close this out with Paul. Paul, thank you for being so patient. Um, I've been looking at your posts in the chat. You're pretty vocal about all this. I'm, I'm glad you're going to actually talk and, and share more. I think it's interesting. I will give them props for being bold. I think that's always um, key in social. Certainly nowadays, everyone does seem to be sort of racing towards the middle or copying other people's features and that sort of thing. That said, I've got real concerns for them, certainly from two sort of perspectives. One, what are they doing with the data? All of that sort of stuff. They are very overreaching as data people from day one and that sort of stuff. I think they have, or maybe they're just coming onto it later, or maybe it's kind of come out in the wash. I think we're missing that this could be quite an interesting new format, if that makes sense. Yes, you could do it on a WhatsApp group. Yes, you could do it via other things. When you think about Twitter spaces, you have to find it. You have to be there at that time. And that's the only time you can do it. And you might not get to the mic and that sort of stuff. This is sort of like a voicemail thing. And if you know um, good podcasts like Pivot, um, some of uh, what do you call it, drag queens do it, where they you know pay for a question and they answer it live and that sort of thing. This sort of stuff could work quite well for them. I don't know anything about the monetization side of it. I doubt there is one straight away and that sort of stuff. But when you think about sort of like show form, formats and interview formats and that this could work quite nicely for it sort of to your point as well greg yes there's a one-on-one -on -one connection i don't 
think anyone with the name Clubhouse is ever going to do anything one on one. It's more about mass people and that sort of thing. But this is sort of going in that direction. But I will say, just to sort of close out, I have massive reservations about them going in this this sort of um, way, just because I think it's more of a feature than a platform. But hey, there's lots of platforms out there that should be features and vice versa. So I guess we have to give it the benefit of the doubt and we have to give them props for trying something new. Yeah, I love that, Paul. Thank you so much for grabbing the mic and sharing that with us. It's been great hearing all these different perspectives. Suze, who knew we were going to have this huge news that came out like an hour before we went live here today in All Things Audio? I know. And as I was saying right at the top, like early earlier this morning, I was sort of looking at our Notion page and wondering what we were going to talk about. Um, but, you know, every, everything comes in usually on a Wednesday afternoon and true to form Clubhouse heard our call. Um, I think my final thought on all of it, and thank you so much to everybody who's added their thoughts and, and taken the mic and, and spoken to us today uh, about Clubhouse and about the topic. Um, but I think my final thoughts are, you know, for all of us here, are we of the right um, age and demographic now for Clubhouse? Are they really after us as their audience anymore? This asynchronous kind of DM chatting, the more I think about it and the more I hear about us all talking about it is very much what my teenage son is doing. You know, he's using short form on demand um, audio in his DMs. You know, they, they have one word text messaging going on most of the time in WhatsApp, all kinds of things. They use an app completely differently to the way that I would use an app, right? So I wonder whether or not perhaps we're not supposed to get it. We're not supposed to open the app and understand it anymore because a bit like TikTok, it's not for us. So potentially there's there's that route. You know, they're trying to get a younger audience. They're trying to meet that younger audience where they are. They're seeing how they're using WhatsApp. They're looking at the way they're using TikTok and short form stuff. And they're going, okay, this is our next generation. The people who use this during COVID were this demographic. They've moved on. It's three years on, right? The, the whole world has, has done a complete shift. And they're looking at how to future proof and forward plan for this app. Then potentially that's what they're doing. And maybe that's why it makes kind of very little sense to those of us that were so engrossed in using it during, during the pandemic times. So that's kind of my final thought for, for this week on this. I know we're going to be talking about this again next week, Madeline. And uh, I'm, I'm almost at the point of saying we should just have like a wider community chat just about Clubhouse. If, as you say, we all go away, go back to Clubhouse if you've not been there for a while, make, th make sure we've got the latest update and everything, and then come back and just have a mass chat about it next Wednesday. What do you feel about that? I love it. I think that just gives us all a little bit of homework to go check. Even if you're not excited about this, just go give it a go. Play around. See what you think. Play with these features. See, if, you never know. It's, it sounds appealing to me after reading the blog post that they just released today. It, it has been updated on my iPhone. So I'm going to play around with it a little bit to see. It might be for me. It might not be. But it'd be, be great if everybody came back next Wednesday for all things audio and share your thoughts. Did it, it, you know, exceed your expectations? Did it fall flat? We, we definitely want to hear from you. We come here every Wednesday. We've done it for the last two and a half years talking about all the latest social audio news. We sometimes talk a bit about podcasting as well, since uh, Susan and I are longtime podcasters. And we definitely want to hear back and hear your thoughts. Morgan, I see your hand is raised. Yes, just a note of caution as well that this really is like a version one of a new app. So I've already encountered a number of red error messages and bits that obviously don't work yet, but in a point one update will. So, you know, definitely go over this week and, and have a go. Um, but don't expect everything to be working. This really is early adopter land again. Thank you to all of our speakers who came on and uh, shared so much great stuff. And we're available in all of your favorite podcast apps. We're out there, uh, All Things Audio. You can also go to allthingsaudiopodcast.com as well. You certainly can. And you can catch us here on Twitter and use the hashtag allthingsaudio. And we'll pick that up throughout the week. So that's it for this week. But thank you so much to everyone that's been here in the space with us and those of you listening. And we'll catch up with you next week. Bye, everybody.